Good evening. I want to welcome all of you watching at home to tonight's CBF gathering. We appreciate your participation in this program as we all continue to find ways to worship, gather, and grow together during these strange times. My name is Kristen Vincent, and I am a member of Trinity Baptist Church in Seneca, South Carolina. My face is just one representing the many public school teachers that are preparing to teach again this fall. As we begin another school year, please pray for the teachers and students of our nation as school will look very different. Tonight's program is in celebration of Jerry Hutchinson, who is retiring from CBF. Jerry has served as the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship's Chaplaincy and Pastoral Counseling Manager since 2014. Barbara Brown Taylor in her book, An Altar in the World, A Geography of Faith, says this, Anyone can ask and anyone can bless, whether anyone has authorized you to do it or not. All I am saying is that the world needs you to do this, because there is a real shortage of people willing to kneel wherever they are and recognize the holiness, holding its sometimes bony, often tender, always life-giving hand above their heads. That we are able to bless one another at all is evidence that we have been blessed, whether we can remember or not. That we are willing to bless one another is miracle enough to stagger the very stars. We give thanks for Jerry Hutchinson, who has been used by God throughout his ministry as a blessing and a hand of hope for so many chaplains and pastoral counselors throughout the years. Thanks be to God for the opportunities we all have to be the hands of blessing in the lives of each other. and trauma you've offered the care that lets us feel and know that God's still there as you set your course now for the open ocean we celebrate your compassion and devotion so we say anchors and wayfair winds and following seas May you always feel the breath of the Spirit on the breeze. May you catch the wind and may you keep your sails on earth. As your love lives on in the partners you sent out to renew God's world. In times of despair, you have brought about the hope of a lived out prayer. As you set your course now for the open ocean, we celebrate your compassion and devotion. So we say, anchors with fair winds and following seas. May you always be. As your love lives on in the partners you send out to renew God's world. Your love 
lives on in the partners who sent it out to the cool God's world. It's good to be with everybody by video today. I was asked to bring a devotional on this occasion of Jerry's retirement, and it's an honor and a privilege to do so. Uh, this passage came to mind in thinking about spiritual health and how we address spiritual health as chaplains and pastoral counselors. This passage addresses the public, the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus. In Mark chapter 1, verse 9, we read, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, and with thee, I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered to him. Will you bow with me in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time we can share together. We thank you for Jerry and his ministry. We pray that you'll continue to bless him in this new phase of life. Bless he and his family. And we pray that you'll continue to watch over him and protect him in the days ahead. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. As I said, when I got the email about giving a devotional, uh, this passage came to mind in Mark chapter 1, primarily because I see chaplaincy and pastoral counseling as a calling, just like we sense a call to be a pastor or a preacher or something else. I believe that God also calls people to be chaplains and pastoral counselors as well. Um, when I was, I was a pastor for 22 years, and after 22 years, moved into chaplaincy, went through a one-year residency, and sometimes it was interesting to hear the responses I got, especially from pastors who would say something like this, well, I heard you left the ministry, and that was an interesting response to me, and there was a time that I had a different perception of chaplaincy, but over these past 19 years, I've come to understand chaplaincy, as well as pastoral counseling, not only deepens our ministry, but it broadens it. John Wesley said, the world is my parish. So chaplains and pastoral counselors, we have the opportunity to address individual spiritual health outside the four walls of the church building. We do that through deep listening, processing the stories of others, and be a, being a witness to their journey. It's been my privilege for, the, for over 16 years as a VA chaplain to hear the stories of veterans. My dad was a veteran, World War II, Purple Heart veteran. So that was some of my reason for moving in that direction. But each one of us, even though we're in a different setting, chaplains address the spiritual health of people wherever we find them. So it's a calling. And, and I'm glad to know that CBF affirms chaplains and pastoral counselors the way we do. At our annual assembly, when we gather chaplains and pastoral counselors 
are commissioned and that gives our work more visibility and affirmation. Uh, when Jesus was baptized, that was a public beginning of his ministry. And when he came up out of the water and the dove descended and he heard the voice, uh, Jerry's been a very affirming voice in my ministry. And I've enjoyed being in his presence, spending time in Decatur, uh, he's always been real, and, and our voice is counted on the council. It was not a rubber stamp, and I, I, I believe that it's still that way, that when you dig into those biographical sketches and, and you share your understanding of the person with the group, and we took that very seriously, that Jerry listened and he took it to heart and it made a difference because whoever, whoever we endorse as chaplains and pastoral counselors are representing our brand, Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. And that's very important. So thank you to Jerry and CBF for giving visibility to these important ministries beyond the four walls of the church. Chaplaincy, and pastoral counseling are also a journey. And I believe it's a spirit-driven journey. As I said, I was called to ministry early in my life, and I understood that for many years to be through the church as a pastor. Uh, and then after 22 years, went through a residency. And in some ways, I feel like I was being driven out into a wilderness and sometimes that residency felt like uh, there were days of temptation and there were days that I was living with the wild beast, delivering verbatims, um, individual supervision with my supervisor, uh, spending group in time in peer groups and coming to understand each, be each other better and to have more self-awareness and really beginning to understand that before I can help somebody else, I really need to understand who I am and have good self-awareness of myself. So those were challenging days. And then when I got the call five years ago or so to meet Jerry in Montgomery, uh, and that I might be a part of the council on endorsement, what a wonderful experience that has been. So chaplaincy, pastoral counseling, it's a calling, it's a journey. And let me say this, it's been fun, especially spending time with Jerry and the council in Decatur at CBF headquarters there at the building. Uh, it was always a joy to be with each other. And I miss that fellowship even today uh, Jerry serenaded us many times with his banjo, and I know he's been on Facebook playing the banjo, and I'm sure in retirement he'll continue to play the banjo and share that, and I hope, Jerry, that you'll continue to uh, share that with us on Facebook. It's always good to see you there. But this scripture especially in verse 12, he says, the spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. Sometimes our ministries may feel like we're in the wilderness. They're difficult days. Uh, Jesus was tempted by Satan. And then it says he was with the wild beast. I feel like during these days of pandemic in some way, we've slowed down. We've been able to listen maybe to what the Spirit's saying to us more in this wilderness of pandemic. And then he goes on to say here in the Gospel of Mark, and the angels minister to Jesus. How wonderful. And I feel like the Spirit's ministered to me during these days. As he did when I served on the council, those were busier days. And Jerry, I don't know if the angels play the banjo, 
But I, I pray that you'll continue to play. And I pray that your days ahead in retirement will be good days. Uh, I appreciate you as my endorser. And I look forward to the days ahead as we shift gears in CBF and pray our blessings upon new leadership. But Jerry, you've been a wonderful endorser, a companion in ministry, and a friend. And I say to you, my brother, blessings. Pray with me. Matthew 5, 16 instructs us, make your light shine so others will see the good you do and will praise your Father in heaven. Today, we praise God for light that shines through Jerry Hutchinson and the good work he has done throughout his ministry, and especially for the last several years of his service with CBF. We give thanks for his courageous and patient work in supporting the almost 800 chaplains and pastoral counselors in CBF during a time of transition and change. We give thanks for the time he spent reaching out to build relationships and walk with us on our journeys. We give thanks for the gentleness, kindness, and generosity in his service to others and for his strong, humble, and intelligent leadership. We ask, Creator God, for your hand of comfort, guidance, and peace to continue in his life if he, as he starts this new chapter of retirement. Bless his family and their time together, and may he continue to find peace and service to you. Now, God, we give thanks for your continued blessing on the ministry of the endorsed CBF chaplains and pastoral counselors deployed all across the world, serving others and serving you. Continue to guide us all to places of service and continue to give us the strength for the work we encounter every day. May we also let your light shine so that others will see the good you do. Continue to give us insight and courage to follow your call on our lives. May we continue to have ears to hear and eyes to see you at work in the world around us. And may we have the perseverance and insight to continue to do our part in your work in this world. And finally, Creator God, we give thanks for the continued support and leadership in CBF. We thank you for the growth in partnerships we've seen over the last several years that have helped CBF transition into a more diverse intergenerational fellowship representative of the world around us. Thank you for providing ways for us to use our human and financial resources to help those in need, provide resources for our ministers and churches, support our students, and fight for justice. Help us to continue to work together to be the presence of Christ in the world around us, both locally and globally. Open our eyes and minds to new ways of engaging in work to create the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Jerry, I want to thank you for the beautiful and wonderful ways you served the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship since January of 2014. You've led our ministries for chaplains and pastoral counselors in really outstanding and excellent ways. Under your leadership, we've endorsed more than 200 chaplains and pastoral counselors. But that endorsement process, while central to your work, has only been the beginning. You've helped us raise substantial funds for the endowment that bears your predecessor's name. You've helped us lift the visibility of the holy calling that is chaplaincy, not just in the work of CBF, but indeed in our communities all across the United States. You found ways to make the work of chaplains and pastoral counselors essential to our fellowship's disaster response strategies. And beyond all that, you've been a friend, a counselor, and a companion, not only to chaplains and pastoral counselors, but also to members of our CBF staff, and ministers all across our fellowship. So today, Jerry, I want to thank you for your wonderful and faithful service. I want you to know that I pray God's richest blessings on you as you begin this new chapter of retirement. And I want to assure you that we are committed to furthering the outstanding work you've done 
by continuing to celebrate the calling to chaplaincy and pastoral counseling, by finding even more ways to make this calling central to our fellowship's life, and by imagining new ways that chaplains and pastoral counselors can be a gift to the church and the world. Congratulations. Thank you, Jerry. God bless. Jerry, you have been a staunch advocate for chaplaincy and pastoral care with the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. You've left a legacy of greatness and we will surely miss you. Hey, Jerry, I just wanted to wish you a happy retirement and just thank you for all the support you've given me over the years, all the guidance and words of wisdom. Um, you have been a great support system for me on this journey of being endorsed by CBF uh, to become a chaplain. And I appreciate all of that. And I know God has great things in store for you at this next chapter of your life. I'm so excited to see it, uh, what God is going to do in your life. And I'm so excited to just know you. And I'm thankful for all you've done for me uh, in the past. God bless you. Good evening. My name is Carol Wilson. For the past five years, I've been assistant to the endorser, Reverend Gerald F. Hutchinson, Jr. We commonly refer to ourselves as the dynamic duo of chaplaincy and pastoral counseling for CBF. Jerry often refers to me as his right hand. If this is true, then Jerry has got to be known as the heart and soul of chaplaincy and pastoral counseling for the past six years. At times, Jerry is a coach, a cheerleader, a guide, an advocate, and a gentle drill sergeant. He never loses sight of the fact that he should represent the presence of God in every situation. I'm grateful to have had him as my friend and my personal everyday pastor. Jerry, as you head into retirement, I'm going to miss you, but I pray that you enjoy all the days of your retirement. Continue to enjoy playing your banjo, your time with your grandchildren, John Grisham novels, and a good Farside comic. I'll end by leaving you with the words I hear Jerry say most often to those as he closes conversations. Jerry, may God continue to guide your footsteps as you go along the way. Hi, Jerry. I'm so thankful for your years of service to the CBF chaplains and pastoral counselors. Your sincere care to see that all of us live into our calling in our many different ministry settings is a gift that I seek to imitate with those whom God trusted me to serve. I wish you the best in this next chapter. Happy retirement. Jerry, congratulations on a job well done. We love you. You have contributed so very much to our CBF family, to our nation, through your service in the United States Navy, and as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can think of no better friend and no one who I am more proud to claim as someone who I have worked alongside collegially in my time. May God bless you and your family as you go into this next chapter and fair winds and following seas should make. Hi, Jerry. I just want to say thank you for your investment in me and your belief in me in asking me to be a part of the endorsement council that was a life-giving opportunity for me and i so enjoyed your leadership and benefited from your compassionate care um, of all of us as we um, looked at endorsement and welcoming others into our community so thank you jerry thank you for your many years of faithful service to cbf it's been an honor to serve alongside you I'm grateful that you've been part of the partnerships and advocacy team within CBF Ministries. When I think back on your tenure, I see so many advances for chaplaincy and pastoral counseling within CBF life. Some of them have been visible to those outside the office, and some have been more behind the scenes. From the day you arrived until this day, we are decades further advanced in our record keeping and database management and online components of our endorsement process. These aren't flashy tasks, but I know that they have meant more consistent contact with our nearly 800 active 
chaplains and pastoral counselors, and more folks coming on board through the endorsement process. Thank you for accepting and excelling at such a critical modernization. You've also done excellent work integrating the council endorsement into the structure of CBF governance. The folks who have served on that council under your tenure have been incredible representatives of the numerous types of diversity we have within those whom we endorse. You've walked alongside hundreds of new chaplains and pastoral counselors through this process over the years, including the 1000th CBF endorsement. I know that without your guidance and affirmation, these folks would not be a part of CBF. For this ministry, we're all grateful. You and Carol have made such a great team. I've enjoyed complete trust and confidence in your leadership, and I know that your steady pastoral presence and good humor will be missed within the office. Congratulations on a job well done. You've served honorably. I hope you have the chance to enjoy many years of happy retirement. Thanks, Jerry, and blessings on you and your family, and keep those banjo videos coming. At this stage in my life, I'm reminded of a comment by my beloved ethics professor in seminary, Dr. Henley Barnett, who upon his own retirement from Southern Seminary said that ministers never really retire, they just retread for the rest of their journey. And yet throughout history, there have been God-fearing women and men in positions of service for the Lord who did finish well. These were people who persevered through many difficulties and temptations in life and leadership. What enabled them to keep going when others gave up or were sidetracked? I think Paul, again, gives us a clue in his admonition to the young leader, Timothy, when he says, take the time in trouble to keep yourself spiritually fit Bodily fitness has limited value by itself, but spiritual fitness has unlimited value, for it holds promise for both the present life and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Perhaps to some of us, spiritual fitness or disciplines conjures up empty rituals or enforce compliance from our childhood days. However, I would contend it is only the spiritually fit leader, who will be able to persevere. A leader who does not practice spiritual disciplines will not be equipped to meet and overcome the challenges of a life in ministry. I like the way Dallas Willard categorizes the disciplines of a godly life. Solitude, silence, fasting, frugality, chastity, confidentiality, and sacrifice. He refers to these as the disciplines of abstinence. Study, worship, celebration, service, prayer, fellowship, confession, and submission he describes as the disciplines of engagement. In my own practice of some of these disciplines, I find that they are not only spiritual exercises, which help to keep one fit, but they are actual meeting places with God. Through each one, I encounter God in a unique way. Silence, study, sacrifice, service, each is an avenue to know a particular facet of the beauty and mystery of God, similar to how the cuts in a diamond reflect the different colors of light. As Christians, we work hard to accomplish the mission of being the presence of Christ in our daily lives and context. We must tackle the job with integrity, patience, mercy, and love. And we must keep at it for a lifetime, no matter what the cost. The common need we all share is to regularly go back to those meeting places with God, where we can draw nourishment and guidance from God daily. Also, I think it behooves us to stop and think before we act, 
to ask ourselves questions such as these. Is this the Christ-like thing to say or do? How will this be perceived? Is this something that we are okay with being made public? What would those closest to me think about this if they knew? Let us practice the spiritual disciplines to keep ourselves spiritually fit. Let us not forget that part of the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, where he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I think of Proverbs 4.23, which says, guard your heart with all diligence, for from it springs the issues of life. Even if the odds are against us in terms of finishing well, never forget that God is for us. Let us be prayerful. Loving God, we can do nothing apart from you. It is your life that conforms us to the image of your Son and that produces lasting fruit. Draw us closer to you. Quicken our hearts and minds towards spiritual disciplines that will keep us rooted in you and your people. Help us to walk in a manner worthy of you so that we may leave a legacy of a life well-lived for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.